You don't have to be pretty like us Be beautiful like you Look in the mirror And tell yourself Be one night and shine an armor Do yourself a favor Fill your skin like leather Everybody, I'm Bensi from Limo and I'm Tedden from Kuzu FM and we bring to you Hashtag Girl Talk, an intimate program for our young girls to guide them through adolescence. Before we start, Bensi and I would like to express our disclaimer that we are in no way experts in the field of child psychology, health, nor counseling, but we do have experts that are going to join us so that we can give the right information to our girls, their parents, our caregivers, and boys as well on these issues. Hashtag Girl Talk is aimed at creating a platform so that we can start this conversation on these important topics so our girls will have access to the right information. Through this program, we hope that all our Boomchus watching and listening will know that you're not alone and there's always help and guidance. On that note, we would like to launch the very first episode of Hashtag Girl Talk that is about self-esteem and body image. What is self-esteem? Self-esteem refers to the kind of attitude we have towards ourselves. Countless studies have shown that a girl's self-esteem plummets when she hits puberty. But how much does that hold true in Bhutan? Well, we went to several schools to find out. Why is it that when we discuss self-esteem issues, it's about girls rather than boys? Well, most studies have shown that when a girl enters adolescence, her confidence level plummets because of changing bodies, social stereotypes on how girls should behave, and her insecurities. Well, this is what all girls have to say about that. We hear about girls' insecurities more because most of the models we see, the popular ones are female, so there's a very fixed, narrow, ideal type for women. But slowly, even there, slowly there are male models and all that, and I have some male friends, I talk to them and they have insecurities as well. I've got people call me, especially my family members, I've got them calling me elephants. They're like, yeah, so sometimes I feel like an elephant walking around them. Um, honestly, up front I was acting like it was nothing, but then from the inside it was kind of some, like it was kind of affecting me mm. somehow. As I grew up, I noticed that the ideal was the very skinny, almost now I realize almost towards an unhealthy side of um, that kind of body was considered attractive and I didn't actually have that body. In fact, as growing up, I started to gain weight and I started to feel a little bit insecure about that as well. So I think it was, it was that stage when I started to think, all right, this isn't it. <laughs> I have a cousin, she, like, she has to skip meals. All she takes is water. And like, she's really skinny right now, <laughs> but she has the curves, but she's not into meals. Oh, wow. Alive. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe little. Her appetite is very less. Uh, usually, most of the interesting stuff, like sports, basketball, football, they are mostly played by boys and not girls. And whenever boys do something, they don't say anything. But then when girls do, they're like, "Wow, a girl's doing it." So I really think that girls are less confident and boys are more because boys, they don't actually care about their looks and all like. Uh, the only thing they have is hair, but us, we have to look at our clothing, our face, our hair. You could call it a stereotype. People just think that, oh, the girls are more neat and presentable and organized, whereas the boys, they like to play, they're rough. And I think it's more of a stereotype, so that's the problem. They're just like, you, you see a girl and you're just like, 
oh my god your cure is not me oh my god that's such a big problem but then there's a boy with his goal all messed up and you're just like ah oh, how is it it's nice and then they don't really mind if the boys are a little bit messy but the girls have to be like literally perfect when it comes in it's like oh what happened to your hair or your face you need to look good girls always look good or something like that but usually guys usually don't say that to each other but it's like more to girls like they expect girls to look pretty or organized or presentable when i was in primary school i used to dance a lot a lot <laughs> and then when i was in class 7 which was in nantan sampa i saw many pretty girls with nice figure dancing then i was like i shouldn't do that they will compare me with them they were like she's more prettier than her she dances better than her so i really hit I really hated people people comparing myself with yeah. some other girl. Self-esteem is like, you know, being comfortable in your body and whatever you do. So, example, if I do makeup, people will comment on me for like, why being fake or do you need attraction from guys? No, it's, it's a no. It's not that I want attention. So, I wish like, alternatives like these should be encouraged instead of, you know, commented upon. Growing up, I don't know, but maybe d during high school, there may be some pressure on girls because boys might be making fun of them and that might really affect their self-esteem. Usually, I've gone through is especially where not feeling confident wearing skinny jeans and boys teasing about our butts and our parents compelling us to wear like sh shirts that are baggy which covers our butts and that does, which usually doesn't look good on us. I don't like doing sports because it's very uncomfortable for me wearing tights during sports and it's more uncomfortable when guys are there watching us play sports. As you can see, I'm very skinny and everyone used to, from my back, used to say that Oh, look at her butt, so small, so small and then I used to feel so insecure. She's so skinny and I'm like fat and it happened in Jigunamgil, like, there was a boy, really rude guy, he was like, call me fat, why are you so fat, oh my gosh, why didn't you diet and all the stuff, and I felt really insecure about my body, like, oh my god, am I that fat, like, do I need to lose weight and be beautiful, like, the rest of the girls, and I even started skipping dinner, just to be thin. The journey of a young girl dealing with her self-esteem may be new to many. But this is best illustrated through the story that was sent to us. Hi, I'm Demma. I love playing with my pets. I draw a lot. And oh, I love cooking with my mom. I think that's when us girls talk about everything. My parents have always encouraged me to share and they love being a part of my life. Speaking of encouragement, I also love to dance. And my parents used to make me dance in front of my relatives. Oh, mom. That's actually how I got the name Funny Sunny Baby of the family. How do I see myself? I never really paid attention, but I've always been comfortable in my own skin. Um, there was this one time that someone very close to me in school called me Hapa Pentang. You see, I have a small fat nose and I used to be teased for it. It actually started with my family and they called me Pentang at home, but I knew that was out of love. But somehow it made it to school until almost everyone started calling me that and I really started wondering if it was really that bad. I guess it grew worse when I started entering my teenage years and I started looking at the mirror and really noticing what my nose looked like. There was this boy I liked in my class but I was so conscious that he would see me like a flat nosed pig so I never really got the courage to talk to him. In fact if I saw him coming I would always try to cover my nose and stay low and I did that so much that it started becoming a habit and I started doing that with everybody because I was so conscious of my nose and slowly I started seeing myself as how I was teased a flat nosed pig I went through a lot of this actually a lot of insecurities and being a teenager I've, almost everyone goes through it and I was no exception when it came to this especially you know my body shape. I was really uh, bothered by the fact that I had this busty area somewhere over here and I was very fond of running but then I could not because I felt when I, when I was running, you know, this thing, the busty area in front of you, it might move and then people might say, okay, she has got these many big, uh, these big boobs, you know. So it was, it was very 
it held me back at that point. And then even with, you know, I used to wear a long t-shirt to cover a certain parts of my body. I love wearing dresses, but then my body's too big, like, yeah. Some girls tear into their looks and body image, but there are some boys who ha who care about their body image more than girls do. Uh, so I'd say there isn't really much difference, and um, you know, there uh, the pe people can make them try to make them feel better by um, looking at the positive side of them instead of the negative ones. I'm teased by my dark skin by my sister and my cousins. Uh, they say. Uh, Nalepem or like blacky like that. And when I talk to my sister, you make me feel really little. I said to, uh, I told her that that's really bad. What have you learned? And I told her that she stopped teasing me. Then I started feeling good. While there were girls who chose to deal with body issues confidently, there were those who chose to do something else. The extreme measure I took was vomiting myself. Uh, whenever I ate something like junk, maybe hamburger and all. I'd go inside the toilet, I would just vomit it out. Yeah, after that, I would feel really good. Actually, you're not supposed to, but I would really feel good. Why did you do that? Because uh, I thought that uh, if you eat something like the fats, obviously it will uh, it'll put, on, it'll put you on like more weight. Whenever I eat dinner now, I feel dizzy. I really feel dizzy, so I have to vomit it out, the food I eat. So I just drink soup now. Does your family know that you're taking this measure? Uh, I just tell them that I feel I feel like vomiting, so I just go inside the toilet and vomit it out <laughs> on my food. Have you heard of bulimia and anorexia? Uh, no. Ninety percent of the girls we interviewed had never heard of bulimia and anorexia, and some of the teen girls also admitted anonymously of having tried some diet fad, trending on social media, to lose weight. Anorexia nervosa is a eating disorder which is characterized by the fear of gaining weight which usually involves having food resistance. People with bulimia often purge by vomiting either by the use of laxatives or other means. I feel we still need to probe harder into this matter because most young girls they don't feel confident to share certain things about their lives like all of us do but especially with the fact that they are in this period of transition from childhood to adulthood, so they feel a lot sensitive about things around them and weight being a very sensitive issue among all young girls, I feel that they don't really come forth seeking advice. It's taken on a different kind of proportion where because of you know children's inclination to using devices all the time and so they get so much of unfiltered illustrations of what a perfect 10 body type is and if they are not surrounded by people who can empathize with them or who can give them the right kind of perspective of what one's perspective should be about one's self-esteem then it can be quite damaging I think. Children especially the teenagers they are fragile beings I think and their face of life is filled with curiosity filled with insecurities and parents should be very much careful with both boys and girls. However, girls by nature we are very sensitive when compared to boys and to be honest society has been very biased, biased towards girls and this biased nature and the sensitive nature of these girls, it creates a very vulnerable environment for girls. While I was growing up, um, I was a fat kid. I think, I mean, uh, when you when you are growing up, for me, I the biggest uh, insecurity, or uh, yeah, the biggest insecurity or discomfort that I had was I was fat. But I didn't allow that to uh, stop me from being the person that I am. And that's uh, the person that I am is uh, is happy, is chirpy, is um, is grateful. You know, if I could go back in time, I think I would be a little bit more equipped in my head and understand that this is just a phase. You're going to grow out of it, you know. And just like this fat phase, you're going to go through many different phases in your life that are going to make you feel insecure. 
It can be about your grades. It can be about boyfriends. It can be, I don't know, your menstruation, your periods, you know, you're having a really terrible day. It can be so many issues. And so if I could go back in time, I would tell myself, you can do this. My mom says, you should be happy about yourself and you, you're the only one who can keep yourself happy. So I find that very important. Most of the people are like, don't act like a boy and stuff. So I really don't think they should do that. They should first, they should try to do what they like and then they'll develop self-confidence. Once they know that, they will realize that this is what, that what will make them confident and what will make them feel uh, secure and comfortable. If you have a sort of body that isn't ideal, that isn't what you see on every Bollywood movie, you're kind of judged, you kind of feel insecure about it. Some people actually say it to you directly, your classmates tease you about it, you get called all sorts of names, the boy from, next, from the next class you don't even know will start calling you that. And I think it's an issue that we have to address because um, it is these comments that make these girls really believe they're not good enough. And as a society, what we have to do, this is not just to the girls, this is as a society, we have to make sure that we don't sort of, we don't impose these misconceptions on the girls. So as a society, this is a plea from a girl myself. When I was a little tomboy, I had a lot of insecurities. Firstly, I had dark skin, you see, so I was called Nali. Look, I'm laughing about it now at 34. But when I was growing up, it hurt, it used to hurt me. You know, I remember wanting to look white. I wanted to be that pretty white girl. I had a lot of insecurities. I had short hair, I looked like a boy, I didn't fit into the so-called pretty little girls. And then I had a big butt, you know, a pokey little butt. You may think I didn't have insecurities. I think I had so many insecurities. And sometimes I feel maybe my insecurities have brought me here to where I am. And it all starts with accepting. Number one, you must accept that I'm not so confident. I have a lot of insecurities. Number two, once you accept your insecurities, nothing can stop you. So young girls, not everything you see in cinema, in social media, on Instagram is what it is. Not everybody's beautiful. Everybody's photoshopped. Real people don't look like that. I guarantee you. I. I don't look like how I look in cinema. You know, when you really see me, you might be disappointed. You might think, oh, I'm Chijare Mindu. Now you know those of me. Oh, I'm Chizuri Mindu. You may think that. People used to say I looked like a Javagi Haparim and all that stuff they used to tell me. But now, you know, I like my big nose. I like my tong tong ears, <laughs> you know. So, you know, you grow, you grow out of it. But the thing is, you must educate yourself and know not compare yourself with all this fashion magazines and cinema and actresses you know, in reality maybe you're better looking than them maybe you're a better person than them so who knows the road to self-confidence is a personal journey we all take different paths and different choices like what kind of friends we make what clothes do we wear what kind of music we listen to what courses to take in college, and also how we choose to see ourselves. Seeing yourself in a positive light and loving yourself may come easily to some girls, but there are those who have a hard time with self-esteem. Finding that worth, discovering that faith in oneself, paves the path to self-confidence. What can you do to build self-confidence? Consciously think positive thoughts, especially when you're feeling down. So take a deep breath and remind yourself that life is so much more than the negativity that sometimes comes your way. Find a passion that interests you or a hobby that will help you discover a new side to yourself. Do you like hiking? Do you like dancing? Do you like sports? Find something that will engage your time and discover your self-worth. Everyone is good at something and if you don't know what it is, well, take this opportunity to find it and nurture it because this will help you build your self-worth. Don't get easily affected by what you see on social media and don't spend too much time on it. Try to engage your time more fruitfully. Spend your time with the people you love. 
not on the phone. Be a support sister. Learn to support one another. Share your happiness with others. Become a big ashim and care for others. Because when you learn to love others, you learn to love yourself. I know saying all this can be easy and building self-confidence is difficult, especially for a young girl with all the insecurities and hormonal change. But my dear Boomchoos, life is so much more to give. We are all perfectly imperfect and that is what makes us unique. So stay positive Boomchoos, it gets better. And you'll know what I mean when you grow up. And with that, we come to the end of the first episode of Hashtag Girl Talk. But girls, we don't want the conversation to end here with this episode. Exactly. Talk to your friends, your family members, your parents, and try to help each other on how to deal with these issues. But if you feel like you have no one to talk to, then you can always call NCWC's recently launched toll-free number 1098. We would like to thank our sponsors, NCWC and Asian Development Bank, without which this program would not have been possible. We'll be back next month with another brand new episode of Hashtag Girl Talk where we'll have a lot more issues, uh, guests, as well as stories. So until then, take, take care, care of